Okay, welcome to the final session where we will now go to a district level. So, if you have noticed, we can take a state here. So, let us go to Andhra Pradesh. Here interestingly what will happen is you can actually search for individual district. So, I search and I get a list of districts. So, I go to East Godavari let us say at random and say open the map of East Godavari. What you get is you get East Godavari sub districts, but now you want to know little more. So, you click on villages. So, you get a map of East Godavari villages. If you are curious as to which are the urban areas in East Godavari, you click and you will find few areas which are urban. Right now, I will switch off this layer. Interesting part is others. Now, others shows you forest area. So, there is a forest area here, forest area is here. This side of course, is a seashore because it is a coastal district. Now, interestingly if I go to query, I ask myself in East Godavari, where are the tribals concentrated? So, very typically tribals will be near the forest dwelling areas. So, you will have percentage of the tribal population and I ask itself, it shows 0 to 100. So, let me be a little ambitious and say more than 85 percent tribals. So, you suddenly find there is a neat cluster over here. Okay. So, 85 may be a little too large. So, let us make it 70 and ask itself again start getting this cluster which is expanding. Let us go to 60 percent. you get something more. But now you see this is here is a line below which you do not see tribal population. So, let me just make it even 50 percent and see kya hota hai. So, let us go to 50 percent, but no I mean you get this cluster over here, but this is almost kind of a boundary below which you do not find the tribal villages with more than 50 percent tribals. Let us reduce it to 40 and see something happens. No, you just get here. So, you suddenly realize that no, this is a kind of a boundary. Okay. So, you took district, you went to village as a boundary, you are looking at the demographic pattern and you are saying that okay, this is my district where forests are concentrated here, the tribals are also concentrated here. Can I look at the scheduled caste population? So, let me go to the scheduled caste population and say percentage of the SC population. It shows again 0 to 100. So, as a curiosity, I am saying, okay, bhi hai kahi where 80 percent or more scheduled caste population is there in a village, uh, you get some small patches over here. Let us say more than 50 percent more than half that also you would not get many, right? but they start appearing here on the coastal side. So, if you go to 40, you will start getting them here and if you go to something like 25, you get here no surprise the fisherman community here is largely from the scheduled caste. So, you start getting a concentration over here, but you notice this line you are not finding many scheduled caste population over here this belt. So, let us go down to 18 percent since I know the story a bit you get this, but there seems to be some kind of a boundary tribal concentration on this side, scheduled caste concentration this side and intermediate level of scheduled castes population concentration here. What does it mean for me as a district administration or as a social scientist or as a person who is looking at uh, let us say implementation of the rural development program? My planning for this region 
has to be different, my planning for this region has to be different. So, it just shows you the clusters in terms of different populations. So, you, are, you can plan differently. The same holds for literacy, a high literacy pocket your planning will be different, a low literacy pocket your planning will be different. Now, this is East Godavari, let us randomly go to Maharashtra and I will take you to a district which is always in the news for child malnutrition, which is called Melghat subdivision of Amravati district. So, I go to the district and I search for Amravati. Now, this is not the Amravati which is there in the newly forming Andhra, this is Maharashtra's Amravati and it has Dharani and Chikhaldara. Now, these are the names which you will hear about uh, when you talk about child malnutrition. So, let me say where are the villages. So, I get my village boundary. Now, you see this sparse area, if you have guessed it, it will not be wrong. If I go for other, this is the forest. So, no wonder this part of Amravati will behave differently and this part of Amravati will behave differently. Now, if you look at Amravati's child malnutrition data, it does not do very badly as a district, but it is this pocket where you have problems. What are the features of this pocket? We will just take a look at that and maybe close our analysis today. If I look at places where I go back to my rural female literacy, so I go to rural female literacy. Now, they have reasonably good rural female literacy in uh, Amravati, but then if I say which is the place where you have less than say 66 percent you will find patches over here. Here you see them few and far between, but if I make it to 77 percent, what you notice is this is a compact belt of low rural female literacy. Is this the area which will have many tribals? Chances are that is the case. So, I go to tribal percentage of scheduled tribe population and I ask it computer G tell me where we have more than let us say 80 percent tribals show me the villages. Okay. So, as they say lock kar diya jai, you find this cluster, but 80 may be a little too large. So, let us say 66 percent. or let us go to even 50 percent, right. So, you get a compact patch here, low female literacy, high tribal concentration. Let us also just quickly look at assetless households. So, I go here, I go to availability of assets. I go to households with no assets and ask again you see a large range. So, I ask computer G where we have households, villages where more than 50 percent households or let us say more than 66 to begin with. More than two thirds household do not have these assets, no radio, no bicycle, no transistor. You do not see it so much over here, but you start seeing this concentration here. And if you lower your bar and say more than half the households, right, you start seeing this cluster. You also see it over here, not that you do not see, but here you see this cluster. So, what have you noticed here? Dharani, Chikhaldara area, this is the Melghat area. It is coterminous with higher tribal concentration, low female literacy, forest and assetless households. So, if your malnutrition incidence will happen, it is likely to happen in Melghat and not in rest of Amravati. Okay, so, before closing, let us just go to this site of NFHS 4 
where you have data related to various women and child parameters. This is a recent, relatively recent data 2015-16. So, you will be able to make a query. I am going to a query where I am asking the computer what is the now, you also have here percentage of household with electricity. So, you can compare it with uh, what you had uh, earlier, but right now I am looking at percentage of malnourished children and which is where I will go to IYCF and nutritional status, it is here. So, I go to IYCF and nutritional status, what does it give me? It tells me number of children or percentage of children who are stunted, percentage of children who are wasted, percentage of children who are severely wasted, percentage of children who are underweight. So, let us ask computer and let us go to not total, but rural areas and ask itself what are the areas where you have more than 50 percent children who are underweight. 50 mind you is a very disturbing number, but I am deliberately taking you there and you get a number of districts, though you find that these are little few and far between if I may say. You go to 45 percent, you start seeing clusters emerging, you go to 40 percent, you see a compact belt. This is where children are underweight. So, when you have to plan about improvement in child status, you have to look at what is happening to this particular area. You can go to an individual state, you can go here for example, we will go to Maharashtra this time instead of Orissa, it gives you the map district level and I ask myself which are the areas where children are stunted or wasted. So, I, I again go here to IYCF and nutritional status and then I ask which are the places where children are underweight in Maharashtra or this time instead of underweight let us ask which are the places where children are stunted. So, percentage of children stunted in rural Maharashtra Again, we will go to more than 50 percent and you will notice not much, okay. you go to 40 percent, now you see a largish belt where children are stunted and if you go to that 35 percent figure which we had taken at all India level, you look at this and you find fairly compact patch where children are stunted and a surprising patch which is emerging here. So, when I am planning for tackling child malnutrition, I will have to look at these kind of clusters. I will close by just showing you percentage of children who are severely wasted. Now, severe wasting of children in rural areas in Maharashtra let us say more than 10 percent of children are severely wasted. Do we have such place? You have patches where children are severely wasted. So, if I have to look at Maharashtra and do a planning, it is the district level figures which will tell me where does the shoe pinch. So, I have now shown you three different sites. One deals with uh, family health uh, survey data one deals with energy exclusively and gives you a comparative figure of 2001 and 2011 and we have the census GIS where you can do your census data mapping. So, with this I think I will leave you to absorb this. What we have learnt is we have learnt at mapping to see clusters that appear in various social indicators or parameters. These clusters will appear for all India level, all India level with the district as a unit, they will appear for states with sub district as a unit, they will appear for district with villages, urban areas, census towns and other that is the forested area, 
that will be depicted there. You can look at various patterns of uh, inequality, you can see the changes that have happened, you can see the changes where they have not happened. You will notice that inequality compounds across different fault lines, rural, urban, male, female, SCST, non SCST. You will find that there are stubborn pockets which remain over the decades, so the literacy level may go up or the wood consumption level may go down or electricity usage may go up, but the relative inequality tends to persist. You also need to go beyond percentages and look at the absolute number. There you will find that few areas account for a much larger burden of the problem that you are looking at. So, you must be able to identify those pockets as well. And finally, you will look at this and you will be able to see inequality in its different facets and that will sensitize you to what is happening in terms of where does the shoe pinch rather than just sticking to data and graph and saying whether the shoe pinches or not. Thank you very much for your patience and listening to this. I hope you have a very productive and enjoyable time in monkeying around these various sites whether it is censusindia.org, whether it is the energy access uh, site or whether it is the national family and health survey which shows you various parameters related to the health of the women and children. Thank you very much.